Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and on January of 2021, Ubiquity reported a breach, which I did a video on where I said it's an explanation, but not a justification. And I see it like that because I wanted to explain what happened and the fact that companies are often silent when there's an ongoing investigation. Later, there was a Krebs article that said Ubiquity's handling of the breach was catastrophic and poor, and the breach was much bigger and worse than anyone had said because of an anonymous tip from a whistleblower that allegedly worked at Ubiquity. And on December 1st, we got a little more insight to what's going on. Because on December 1st, they arrested Nick Sharp former employee of technology company charged with stealing confidential data and extorting company for ransom while posing as an anonymous attacker. Now, the thing is, we have this labeled as company one. But why do I think this is Ubiquity? Well, Nick Sharp, if you checked his LinkedIn profile, says he works for Ubiquity and works for Ubiquity during the time that this occurred. And it all lines up with everything in the indictment here. And he was trying to extort them for $2 million to return the files and identification of the remaining purported vulnerability. This is really interesting because what he claimed was there was a hack that allowed this attacker to steal the data and part of the ransom that would be paid is also disclosing how the attack happened, which is actually really easy for Nick. He could just say, I did it, but I don't think that was his plan. I'm not really sure Nick had a plan or was very clear on how all this was going to go down. Now, Nick's position afforded him a very high level of privilege at Ubiquity. Therefore, he had the full access to do this. And what made matters worse is when the breach occurred and the anonymous email came in with this demand, Nick was assigned to do the investigation because, well, that was something he was in charge of his cloud credentials, cloud development. And this creates kind of a big problem. We didn't know Nick was the one doing it. So they assigned Nick to the task. But you can't easily protect against insider threats, but you can create good audit logs, which, of course, Nick subsequently tried to delete. Nick Sharp exploited his access, trusted insider to steal gigabytes of confidential data from his employer, then posing as an anonymous attacker, sent the company nearly $2 million ransom demand. Now, what actually caused him to fail and how all of this occurred, and here's where it aligns, he was employed by Company One from about... August of 2018 up to April 1st of 2020, Sharp was a senior developer who had access to credentials for Amazon Web Services and GitHub servers. In July of 2020, Nick purchased Surfshark VPN to mask his public IP. But at one point while he was exfiltrating data, apparently he had an internet failure and the VPN didn't come back up. So his home IP address became unmasked following a temporary in and out internet outage at Sharp's home. This is part of the identifying piece of information that they needed. So they knew he was using the same Surfshark VPN with that same Surfshark VPN IP and connecting to those GitHub and AWS accounts with these credentials. Then when that VPN dropped, he logged in with his home IP address. Now you have some correlation data that the FBI was using in order to get a search warrant and then raid Nick's home. This is where things get a little bit crazy because it was after they refused to demand, he published part of the data he had stolen. Then on March 24th, 2021, FBI agents executed a warrant on Sharp's residence in Portland, Oregon and seized certain electronic devices belonging to Sharp. During the execution of that, Sharp made numerous false statements to the FBI agents, including other things in substance that he was not the perpetrator of the incident and that he had not used Surfshark VPN prior. Apparently he forgot that he bought it on his PayPal and they confronted him. And of course it was his PayPal account. And he said, it, someone else must have used my PayPal account to do this purchase. This is where he dug himself a deeper hole. Several days after the FBI executed the search warrant at Sharp's residence, Sharp caused false news stories to be published about the incident and Company One's response to the incident related to closure. In those stories, Sharp identified himself as an anonymous whistleblower with Company One who had worked on remediating the incident, which actually was a truthful part. He was also the one causing the incident. So in some ways he wasn't lying when they said it was being bungled because as it turns out, Nick was the one doing the bungling both internally and being the threat actor, also being in charge of the investigation. So yeah, this is just kind of a big mess. Now, Nick is facing a lot of jail time over this. This is a terrible idea to do insider threat, to steal information, to do any of these things. It's just like embezzlement or any other type of crime against your employer. 
I don't really get it. I think it's just a horrible idea. If you hate your employer, leave. If you uh, are just after some money, I don't know. That seems like uh, a lot of money, I guess, a few million dollars. But is it really worth it because of the jail time he's facing? I don't know. That's ultimately something he's going to have a lot of time to think about because uh, I don't really see a way out of this. Now, whether he pleads guilty, not guilty, whether there's a trial will be kind of interesting. If he pleads guilty, does a plea deal, we'll probably not have any more information than we have right now. If there's a trial, there will be a lot of transcripts and we may gain some insight into the wherewithal and what he was thinking when he did all of this and, you know, could be kind of interesting to read. This is actually some of the source material over at Darknet Diaries is they will go through and read court transcripts to put their amazing stories together because they do offer a little bit more insight or compelling reasons and some of the details of what went on that's more than just the charges that you see brought against someone. In the end, though, insider threat is really, really difficult to protect against. You can compartmentalize things as much as possible. You can follow all principles of least privilege, but ultimately someone has to put those compartments and those principles together of least privilege. And if that is a higher end employee in terms of their position and the access they need to do their job, they do pose a threat. Now, the next best thing you can do is have really detailed audit logs of what people did and when to keep an eye on how things are going. Now, this does not stop someone from stealing data. It just lets you know and gives you a trail to who took the data and how that data was exfiltrated if it was. So there's a lot of controls that can be put around that, but it's still a really challenging problem. The good news is it doesn't happen very often, so it's not something that you should absolutely be worried about, but the worry is never absolutely zero. It is something that you should always be putting as much mitigation in place. But ultimately, yes, even as a business owner myself, I do have to put faith and trust in some people. It's the only way you'll grow your business and move forward. Now, I'll leave links down below to the Krebs article and the follow-up Krebs article and the Bleeping Computer article and the indictment itself, of course, so you can dive in it and read. I haven't really seen anything else relevant. Lots of speculative things of this or that and the other posted in different Reddit forums. Nothing really of material or interesting or any more than just people wanting to rah-rah saying he was not a nice person. But I think anyone who tries to steal from their employer and do this is really not a nice person. So I think Nick's a dick. And I think I seen that on Reddit. And I'll at least agree with that statement right there. All right. And thanks. And thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please give us a thumbs up. If you would like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. If you'd like to hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the description of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts that we sell and designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thanks again for watching and look forward to hearing from you.